Hello and welcome to the TomCast. I'm Tom, president and dictator for life of 515comics.com. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to, uh, to make a mask. Uh, I've been talking about wanting to do this for a really long time, so... I'm just gonna film some of my uh, some of my workings here, some of my attempts. So just to get you up to speed, uh, I have what is called Cellu Clay. This is not a product that was recommended to me by anybody, and I have no idea how it's going to work out. Um, but it's basically it says it's instant paper mache. It's basically um, paper fibers uh, that you just combine with warm water. Uh, and it ends up being something a lot like modeling clay, uh, but will end up drying very hard. I'm really not sure quite what to expect, uh, but I'm going to give it a try. Uh, hopefully it works. So I have made a quick adjustment to this hockey mask. Um, I just cut the nose off of him. Um, because uh, this was what I originally used as a model for the first clay demo mask that I made, which I now pretty much just use as a table ornament because it was too heavy and brittle to really add a lot to, uh, to be wearable. I'm gonna go ahead and just mix up some of the cellulite clay and, uh, and film that for you. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm gonna try and just mix about half of this bag of clay material, of paper material, basically. Ooh, it's dusty. Don't breathe this. Uh, we're on YouTube. Because <clears throat> I think about half of it would be all I would need to make a pretty good mask. Oh boy, this stuff is dusty. I really should <clears throat> wear some protection. Just step away from it there. So now I've got 16 ounces of warm water and about half a box of this stuff. It's weird how sweet it smells, you guys. Okay, uh, I did read the instructions once. I don't really remember too much else. Wow, that's a lot of dust. Now, now it doesn't smell sweet anymore. Now it just smells like wet paper. <laughs> Perfect, okay, oh, this is weird. Okay, so yeah, I definitely see how this is going to be very clay-like already. It's hard to say at this point how well this is actually gonna work. All right, so this this is uh, this is about where we are at. I did end up using most of the clay that I created. At first, I thought that it was way too much, and ultimately, this is a lot thicker um, than I I kind of wanted it to be. Uh, this honestly looks very similar to I got this out just for comparison. This actually looks uh, very similar to how this mask looked when I was originally working on it. Um, so, yeah, so, and it's about that same, that same thickness, uh, on this one. However, I do think that when this dries, that it will end up being a lot lighter. Uh, that's the hope, right? Um, and at least should take to, uh, glue and paint and other things maybe a little bit better than this. Um, but a big issue, a big concern is that weight. So once this has had a couple hours to dry, I'm going to come back to it tonight before bed. Uh, I'm going to cut out the eyes. I will do some deep scoring in it uh, for the teeth and the, the cracks around the eyes. Uh, and then once it is completely dry, I will sand it. It's looking a little lumpy right now, uh, especially right there at the chin. I gave it a little, a little lump in the chin there. I didn't mean to do that. Um, but, but again, I, I do expect... Uh, some of this to go away with drying and uh, most of it to go away with sanding. So we're going to see how this turns out. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how this, how this shapes out. We'll come back in a little while. Hey, welcome back. It's tomorrow. So this has had uh, about, I mean, 14, 15 hours to dry at this point. Uh, it says it needs a full day to dry and I believe it because it still feels uh, a little damp. A little cool to the touch. Uh, I forgot to film last night when I cut out the eyes and did some carving, but here let me show you. Let me show you where we're at here. So went ahead and carved the grooves for the teeth very deep uh, and did some deep carving around the eyes for the uh, 
the cracks. It made the eyes a little bit bigger, I think, than they were on the original mask, or at least a little bit bigger on the inside, uh, where it's going to be up close to your face, because I want to make sure that whoever wears it can see through it. I can already tell it's getting pretty stiff. It's a lot lighter than it was last night. Definitely going to get some white spray paint to uh, to get this thing a nice neutral color. Um, pretty happy with how it's turning out so far. So that's it for this check-in. The saga continues. Went ahead and uh, one of the pieces of advice here was to put it in the uh, in the oven for a couple hours to help it complete drying. Um, so since two days uh, being left out to dry didn't quite cut it. I went ahead and just got it out of the oven about a half hour ago um, and it is it is now it feels very very dry and very stiff which is what I want it also feels very sturdy I'm applying some pressure can't really get it to move at all it doesn't feel like it's gonna give I don't hear it cracking or anything um, but yeah yeah it's uh, it's coming along so the next step is to see how it takes the sandpaper so I don't have any right now and I got other stuff to do tonight anyway. So tomorrow uh, after work I'm going to try and stop by somewhere, pick up a couple different grades of sandpaper and uh, see how that works on this guy. As you can see, yeah, he's still quite craggy. But now that it's dry, I'm really feeling confident about this. The next major thing is just seeing how, how I can, what I can do with the sandpaper. If I can get this guy nice and smoothed out and I can get rid of some of this crustiness around the edges and really kind of reshape him because he looks a little, a little wobbly lopsided. Um, but if I can really smooth him out, then I think this might be the stuff that I use uh, until somebody shows me something that's easier and cheaper and better. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied so far, so we'll check in again later. Uh, it's been a couple days again. Uh, I have done a bunch of stuff off camera, so I'm just going to kind of let you know what I've been working on. Uh, so I got a bunch of sandpaper, and I did sand down the mask quite a bit, uh, and I've started painting it, which you can see here. I've got the one eye uh, all painted, and I went ahead and spray painted the mask white first uh, to really kind of even it out. Uh, I was trying to work out some more of the cracks and crevices. Um, some of them were quite deep, and I did get quite a lot of them out, but I actually really like the effect that it's given it, especially now that I've painted it white. Uh, I really like how it looks with some of that texture. I think that really adds something. Um, on future masks, I think I might try to get them a little smoother, but honestly, like, they're always going to be a, a little imperfect. Um, that's just sort of the thing about having a, a handmade craft item like this. But, uh, but yeah, uh, the painting's going real well. Not sure how long it's going to take me to completely finish painting it. Uh, doing the teeth is going to be a little, maybe a little uh, nerve-wracking. So sorry about the horrible lighting uh, on most of these videos, but, uh, but hey, check this out. Boom! So there we go. Uh, there is all of the black. Uh, I did pretty good, I think. I did touch up a couple spots. Uh, which seem the touch-up seems to have worked quite well. I don't think it's noticeable. Looks like it meshes well with the white of the mask, so that's great. He's looking pretty good. He's looking like a way mask. So really excited to um, yeah check that out. Booyah! Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> yeah, I don't. I I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know what that was. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and spray this with some sealer, um, just some craft sealer, some clear craft sealer. We'll see how it looks after that. Uh, probably going to call it good for tonight. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll get the hot glue gun out and we will start, uh, start making this a complete wearable mask, which I, I just can't tell you how excited I am to get to that point. As far as how long it took me to paint, the eyes and the teeth, uh, probably about an hour and a half, maybe, hour, hour and a half. It's something that, uh, that I will think about when I carve future masks 
is making the carvings a little bit wider or maybe just getting some better paint brushes to deal with these. Also, because I didn't end up sanding down as much of it as I thought I would, because this stuff is a lot denser uh, than I realized initially, I don't think I need to carve as deep uh, as I did for these uh, on future masks. So, anyway, really happy with it, uh, and I'll touch base with you soon. It is the next day, and we're working on getting the mask finished. I've enlisted help of my lovely wife and she uh, so we were just testing out this material this is the sheer fabric that we're going to put behind the eyes uh, so that when you're wearing the mask uh, it's not just you know holes but it'll actually be black like in the comics um, and uh, we decided uh, after rigorous testing that two layers of this material uh, is going to be enough when it is attached to the mask that you will still be able to see through it but you won't be able to see the wearer's eyes very well uh, or at all actually so uh, we we're actually quite impressed with how well this shaded the eyes uh, so now I'm doing uh, the cutting I'm just trimming this this section so that it uh, we can then attach it to the mask and my wife uh, told me that I should cut it with these pinking shears, which I've never actually used before. I've seen these before, but I didn't realize that these were... What do these do again? Uh, they make it so that the edges of the material don't fray. That's awesome, which is ideal because, I mean, it's this material came to me frayed. Like, buying it in the store, when they cut it, it's all frayed. So uh, this is nice to kind of clean it up a little bit. And it makes a cool zigzag. Holy crap, look at this! This god dang way mask. <laughs> I'm I'm one of them way whack cries. <laughs> this is cool. This is this is pretty neat. Wow, I'm actually really impressed with how well it's staying on my head. I know, I did not expect Just as that. is. Like so Patty and I were discussing Can I do this? Uh, Patty and I were discussing uh, putting on a top strap, but uh, we've just got the one strap on right now. And I made it kind of tight for Patty, so it's especially tight for me, so that if someone had a smaller head than me, that they could still wear the mask. Um, yeah, that actually grips quite well. Um, oh yeah, and there's the, there's the, uh, we've got the eye backing on there now, so that's, that looks very nice. Um, yeah. I'm very excited. This is great. Look at that! It's a mask that I'm gonna sell. That's cool. Mm. You should laugh again. It's <laughs> <laughs> a fake laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, the hooded man, right? How's that? How's that? Oh! Is that cool? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I can't wait to see it! This is cool. It's a little freaky. It's like he's here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright. Okay. Alright. Here we go. So, if you are going to be at RodCon, Tomorrow, or today, if you watch this video on Saturday, uh, the very first and currently only extant Way Will Cry mask will be for sale. So stop by my table, check out my comic, and if you want to buy this mask, you better get there quick. Because I bet it's going to sell. Because it's pretty cool. And there's just one. More in the future. Thanks as always for watching and keep your stick on the ice.